Jamie Davis here at NTI 2014. We're here in the Rose Medical Systems booth. We're going to be looking at something called Instant Voice. I have Dan Clark, the CEO of Rose Medical Systems. And Dan, uh, thank you very much for getting in contact with me and telling us about this innovative new product. Well, thank you for uh, coming in and seeing us, Jamie. Uh, Instant Voice is a first-of-a-kind product. Uh, it's being launched here for the first time uh, in, uh, at this uh, AACN meeting. We uh, recently completed an evaluation of the product with the Sharp Healthcare Group in San Diego, where we're from. And uh, we've gotten such a favorable response from the evaluation that we decided this would be a great opportunity for us to introduce Instant Voice to the ICU Nurses Association. So tell us what Instant Voice is. This is really a tool that helps those patients that can't communicate very well because of medical devices or things they're connected to, um, allowing a person who's trached, for instance, to communicate with their nurse directly. Right. Well, there's roughly 8 million patients a year in the United States alone that temporarily lose the ability to communicate. Uh, this can be due to, obviously, intubation, but also spinal cord injury patients, burn patients, facial and neck surgery patients. So the, the total, for, according to the AACN, by the way, uh, is just over 8 million uh, as of last year. 5 million of those patients are in ICUs alone. So this tool is the first time a patient in that situation has the ability to communicate not only with their nurses, but their doctors, their caregivers, as well as their family and friends. And so give us a quick example of how that works. Um, you know, what are they, do they have to be able to use a touch finger interface? Are there other ways that they can activate the device? Well, first of all, I should explain, Instant Voice is a software program, and then we implement a variety of hardware options. Uh, the device you're seeing behind me is uh, a medical grade computer we selected. Uh, we provide the hardware and the software as a service to the hospital. This is not something we intend to sell or market it directly to the hospitals. It's much like the translation modes uh, and systems the hospitals use. Uh, and I'll show you uh, during this demo that it also has a translation mode. So whatever language is needed, we can implement. Uh, for this particular demonstration, we have Spanish as well as English on the system. But to answer your first question, uh, if the patient can touch the screen, it's great. But we also have a variety of handicap switches. So if a patient can just move a finger or can slide a finger uh, or use a sip and puff switch, we can provide those. And also we have an eye blink sensor, which if a patient's totally immobilized and can just move their eyelids, they can actually communicate, build full sentences and paragraphs, store them, and then communicate later with their family members or with their uh, medical caregivers. That's fascinating and really uh, opens up a whole host of communication possibilities for nurses to be able to talk to these patients that they haven't been able to communicate, uh, understanding their pain levels, understanding their needs, and really improving their care situation. Well, Jamie, what happens right now when, when an ICU patient hits the call button? Uh, and the RN has to usually come into the room and they don't know what the patient needs. So they have to start asking a series of questions. Are you in pain? And if they nod their head or blink their eye or squeeze the nurse's hand, that gets them to the next level. Then, okay, you're in pain. Where do you hurt? Is it your head? Is it your neck? You get the idea if you've, you're a nurse yourself. So you understand it's a series of 20 questions and you may never get the answer you're looking for and the patient gets frustrated. You as a caregiver get frustrated and sometimes you walk away, angers the patient, Everybody's frustrated. With Instant Voice, the patient can directly communicate exactly what they need, if they're in pain, where it hurts, what hurts, what the pain level is, and what they need. So you know, as a nurse, what to do for them. But if I only have some physical needs, for instance, I just need to go to the bathroom, or I need my pressure boots uh, you know, loosened, or I need to be turned over, I can send that same message to the nursing station, and now you don't have to send the nurse in. I can have, uh, or the hospital could have the uh, assistant on duty come in, or with CNA or whatever. So it saves a lot of nursing time trying to do that one-on-one -on -one communication. Communication boards and handwriting and lip reading and uh, asking 20 questions always involves two people. Instant voice eliminates the need for that second person. You don't have to uh, be pointing to a picture or a diagram or a body part. You can actually tell the nurse exactly what you need ahead of time. So when you walk in that room as an RN, you know what I need and how to take care of me. So let's take a look at the demonstration here if you'd like to point out to me what's going on. Well, the first component of the system is what we call the patient module. And this is a medical grade touchscreen computer. 
and the software that resides on it allows a patient to select from a variety of uh, pre-done phrases. So I'm just going to give you a very common one, is something hurts. So if I were to touch, excuse my right hand here, I'm going to touch my blank hurts, and you see it starts to build a message. But you also see the bottom half of the screen has refreshed and gives the patient a variety of choices. So I'm going to use throat since it's a very common one with an intubated patient. Now when I touch throat, it says my throat hurts. If someone's in the room with me, I can hit the speak button. My throat hurts. And it will speak that for you. Now, 90% of the time or more, you're not going to have somebody in the room with you. So that's where the nursing station comes in. And if I were to hit the nurse button, it will wirelessly send that to the nursing station. So watch what happens when I hit the nurse button. Now, you may not hear this on this video, but what happens, the, nurse, the clerk manning the nurse station sees a, a yellow border light up that corresponds to my room. That has my information on it, and it also has an audible tone. Once I send the message, the patient gets feedback, and you'll hear... Your message, my throat hurts has been received at the nurse's station. Now, that's fine for a pain issue, but here's the issue that InstaVoice saves a lot of time on. What if I only needed to go to the bathroom or I wanted some water? In this case, if I touched, I need the bathroom. I need to go to the bathroom. Now, if I sent that message to the nursing station, the clerk wouldn't have to send that to the nurse on duty. She could send a CNA or an assistant or a candy striper or a volunteer, somebody that's helping you know, take care of the patient's physical needs. Uh, we believe that will save an inordinate amount of nursing time in the future, uh, just not having to deal with the 20 question issue that we talked about earlier. So uh, I'm showing you how a patient touches the screen, but as I mentioned, there are different ways for uh, the patient to access this. We, we just changed the settings. So now if a patient can, is restrained and can only move a thumb or a finger, you can see on the screen, they can move down the screen and do the same kind of thing I was doing by touching it, by just selecting I need, and it could be medicine, pain medicine. I need my pain medicine. So just using a thumb or one finger, we allow them to do that. Some patients can't even do that, so that's why I want to show you the eye blink sensor as, as kind of a last method of doing uh, communications and the patient uses their eyes. Now, in this case, we use an empty frame of glasses, but if you looked on this side right here, this is a little optical sensor that can actually see my eye blinking. So I'm gonna put it on. So now, what I'm gonna do here, I can set the scan speed to as slow or as fast as I need, depending on the patient's handicap. I'm gonna blink until I hit pick phrase, and then I'm gonna blink again. Now when I blink the second time, it goes down and it waits for the patient. Now I'm going to say something hurts, so I'm going to blink, and when this particular block lights up, I'm going to blink again. Now it waits for the patient. So if I were to say my stomach hurts, for instance, I'll scan, or hit scan. I blink, and it goes to speak. My stomach hurts. So you can see, just using my eyes, and now if I needed to send that to the nursing station the same as before, I would send that and the patient would get the feedback. So that's the eye blink sensor. So we really don't uh, have to worry about the handicap of the patient. Any patient in any condition can use this. As long as they're cognizant enough they can read, they can use instant voice. That's just amazing, and for anybody that's cared for a patient that has been unable to communicate, you're right, the frustration level for the, both the caregiver and the patient and the patient's family members increases exponentially with every increased need to try to say something. Yes, and without tell, uh, taking too much more of your time, that we can make uh, this uh, the letters big, we can uh, let the patient store and recall sentences and phrases for a later time, so you don't have to constantly be hitting these. For instance, when the physician comes to see you making rounds, they're not going to wait for the patient to peck and you know choose out what they want to say. So we have a store and recall function where they can say, how did my surgery go? What kind of medication will I be on? When will I get off the ventilator? How long will I be in ICU? And simply recall those and speak them to the doctor. So it saves, again, a lot of time and gets a lot of information done between the patient and the doctor. 
but I could also set, store and save stuff for my family member. If you were my brother, I could send a message to you saying, when you come over this afternoon, bring my golf magazine. So it, it addresses not only the physical needs of the patient, but emotional needs as well. Fantastic. Now, is this available now? We are just launching it at this show. Uh, we are still a small company out of San Diego, and we're going to launch it in the greater uh, San Diego and Los Angeles area. But as the need uh, arises, we will start you know, opening up new markets. And hopefully at this show, we're getting a lot of interest from everywhere, from uh, Maine to Florida, out to the West Coast. So uh, it's just a matter of now being able to fill those orders. And where can folks find out more about this? Well, uh, we have a website. Uh, it's www.rosemedicalsystems.com. Uh, everything you need to know is on there, uh, including all the contact information, as well as the video, uh, which we have. Uh, we have a short 10-minute uh, documentary that we shot at Sharp Coronado Hospital, where we did a six-week evaluation of Instant Voice on their long-term subacute 2 patients, uh, and it was a very successful evaluation. Excellent. Well, Dan, I want to thank you very much for being on The Nursing Show and sharing some really cool, innovative patient care technology with us. And hopefully uh, you'll find this coming to your hospital setting soon. Uh, I'm Jamie Davis again here for The Nursing Show. Remember to follow up at nursingshow.com for all of the segments we will be having for you from NTI 2014. All of the things that we're shooting here at NTI 2014 with the Critical Care Nurses Conference is brought to you through the generous support and sponsorship of Physio Control. You know, I couldn't do it without them. And you need to understand that there's a lot of things that you could be doing to improve your CPR, improve your resuscitation rates using their tools, whether it be the Lucas, whether it be CodeStat or LifeNet software, or even things like their LifePak 20. Whatever the case may be, I want you to check it out. Head over to physio control Control.com and check out all of the amazing tools to improve CPR for your facility and your own practice.